Welcome everyone to one more session in core JavaScript concepts series. In this particular session, we are going to look at the concept of closure. First things first, starting with what is closure? So, to know the concept of closure, you should know the concept of function. What is a function? Okay, that most of you must be knowing. And what is a lexical environment? that you must be knowing if you have seen my previous videos so if you don't know about lexical environment see one of the previous videos of uh, lexical environments from the same playlist and come back so a uh, function plus its lexical environment is closure of that function okay it is closure it is closure of that particular function so what is a closure? Closure is the function, the function itself and lexical environment of the function. What is a lexical environment? It's local memory. The uh, local memory of the function and the reference to the lexical environment of its parent is known as lexical environment of a particular function. So suppose we have, let us say we have a function, we have a function x, okay. And over here we have declared a variable a. Over here we have declared a variable a which is equal to 10. And then, then we have a function, we have a function y with some lines of code, okay. And then we are ending y as well as x, okay. So, what is closure of y, okay. What is closure of y? If I if I just write y as closure, okay, then what is a closure over here with respect to y? It is, it is nothing but, it is, it is nothing but, let me just move my video to side, okay. So, it is, it is nothing but y, okay, the local storage of y plus the lexical environment, the lexical environment of y. So, is a included in this closure? Yes, it is included in this closure as A over here is, is included in the lexical environment or local storage of its parent. And what is a lexical environment of Y? It's local storage as well as reference to its parent's local storage or parent's lexical environment. Okay, so we can access A from inside Y. Okay. Now, this is closure. This is a very simple concept. Then, why do people get confused in closure? Let me just demonstrate you practically how is closure significant in JavaScript. Okay, so I have written a few lines of code over here and the output is very much predictable. Can you guess what will be the output? Just pause the video and guess and come back. I hope you have paused the video. So, the answer will be 9. What will happen is, the pointer will go inside function B. Over there, it will try to access X. Is X available in function B? No, it is not available. So, it will try to reach out to its parent with the reference to the lexical environment. Okay, we have inside B, we also have the reference to A. Okay, so it will just refer to its parent and it will try to search for X inside its parent and over here, it will get the value of X as 9. Okay, as soon as it gets the value, it will print it on the console and the function will return. Okay, the function will return void or function will be over. Okay, and the memory or, or the call stack, okay, call stack will be erased. So, that is the output. Output is very predictable. So, I'll just save it and I'll just uh, move to console. Okay, so over here you get 9. Now, what I will do is, I'll, I'll just show you, show it to you again. Okay, so over here as you can see, you get 9 over here. Okay, and now, we will we will just try to look into the sources okay so we will just try to put a debugger over here okay right over here so let us try to put a, a debugger and then we will reload the code okay so let me reload the page okay so the debugger is over here over at this breakpoint and at this breakpoint you see we have something 
called the closure okay so this is the closure this is the closure of function b okay that is the function b itself okay function b itself and the reference okay and the lexical environment and its lexical environment and what is present in lexical environment of a function its local memory as well as reference to its parents lexical environment and thus we get the value of x as 9 okay thus we get the value of x as 9 so this is a closure okay very very simple concept but where do people actually get confused where the the point at which functions are passed as parameters functions are used as return values over there people get confused let me show you how okay so a function a function can be written okay a function can be stored in a variable it can be stored in a variable variable y equal to function b okay it can be stored in a variable okay we can also pass a function as a parameter okay so we can pass this function we can pass this function control c and control v we can pass this function as a parameter and whoops okay so we can pass this function as a parameter and we can return the function okay we can return the function so in this case i will return y okay i'll return y and now what i will do is what i will do is uh, i will store the return value okay uh, i will just write return value return value and i will i will call a okay so i will store the return value and i will just console log the return value i will console log the return value so what you will get answer is very predictable you will get this particular function right you will get this one particular function so let me just uh, remove this debugger okay let me just remove this particular debugger i will stop the execution and then i will save it okay let me save the code and over here, over here, whoops, we, okay. So, you see that we have got this particular function, function p, okay. But now, but now what if, what if I try to call this ret value, okay. What if I try to call this particular function, okay. So, what will happen is, what will happen is it will go to this particular function and it will go to this console okay console log now now what happens is it it tries to access x right it tries to access x x is not there in that particular function okay and it is not uh, it so it tries to reach out to its parent okay but its parent is gone right we the declaration over here when we move to line number eight okay when we move to this particular line we move to line number eight the reference to this particular function or this function has been erased from the memory so from where it will get the value of x okay and if it does not get the value of x then we should either get not defined or we should get under right this is the concept that either we should get not defined or undefined. Let me try to save the code and let us see. You see, we are getting 9. Okay. We are getting 9. So, many of the developers, they just pull their heads that why are we getting 9? From where the function is remembering it. Okay. So, what happens is, what happens is, when we return the value of y, actually we don't return the whole function, okay. We don't return these lines, but we return the whole closure, okay. We return the whole closure, that is function plus its lexical environment, okay. So, it still remembers the reference, okay. It still remembers the reference to x because we are returning the closure and this reference to x isn't garbage collected as we are returning it okay so it still remembers the reference to x and thus x is called again okay so x is excess and over here over here what if i change the value of x to 18 what if i change the value of x to 18 so what will happen is what will happen is let us try to understand line by line 
uh, x value of x will be 18 okay the value of x will be 18 why because first it was an a and after the execution we are calling the return value okay so it remembers the reference okay over here we aren't passing the copy of x when we are using variable then at that point of time we aren't passing copy of x but we are passing the reference to x and this was a very significant concept of closure to better understand what happened under the hood, I have just uh, written it into the whiteboard and we will dry run our code. Okay, what is the meaning of dry running the code? We are checking line by line and we are just guessing what can be the output of that particular line. Okay, so when we try dry running it, okay, first of all, first of all, it will come, okay, it will come to function A, okay where variable x has been declared okay so we are into this okay i'm not drawing the full call stack i'm not drawing the full call stack but i am only drawing the execution context okay separate execution context where we have we have x equal to uh, x equal to 9 okay so over here x will be equal to 9 then we had variable y okay which is equal to a function b okay so variable y is a function okay is a function okay and then what we tried to do is we just tried to change we just tried to change the value of x okay so now over here we are just changing the value of x from 9 from 9 we are changing it to 18 from 9 we are changing it to 18 okay and then we are returning y okay when we return this function okay when we are returning this function what is actually returned is the function okay the function itself so we have this particular function that is b okay that is b this is returned okay plus something else is written okay plus something else is written that is reference okay reference to the memory of a okay reference to the memory of a so all the variables or in the local storage of this particular a isn't garbage collected okay isn't garbage collected when we end the function we end the function all the variables are garbage collected what is the meaning of garbage collected all the variables are assigned either a garbage value or memory is free okay memory is free but we aren't freeing the memory okay still the values are there over here so it will it will have function b as well as its own lexical environment okay which will have reference to x okay which will have reference to x and thus it is as it is returning this closure okay this is a closure what we call it this is a closure okay so as we as it is returning this particular closure as it is returning this particular closure we will uh, we will get the value of x okay we will get the value of x and we will not get anything like uh, undefined or not defined but we will get 18 as the output 18 as the output and this is the significance of closures okay so we have many use cases of closures that is they are used in uh, we can say they are used in memoization then they are used in set interval and set timeout function so closure are very beautiful thing in javascript and you will learn more about closure in the upcoming videos so that's it for this particular session and let's meet in the next session thank you everyone